rapture ready. Please turn your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We'll put it up on the screen. Here's Paul writing, King James Version. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not precede them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. When I talk to other preachers and pastors, and we're drinking coffee, and we get to talk about the, uh, the second coming of the Lord, we use the word rapture often, although we know that the word doesn't appear anywhere in the Bible. But it describes and refers to everything that is found in the Bible. It comes from a Latin word, rapito, which means to seize or to carry off. Now, the Greek word parousia does appear in Scripture. It refers to the second coming of the Lord. And we know from Jesus' own words that he is coming back for us. John 14. You've heard me read it a thousand times. He says, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will return. I will return and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there he may be also. Jesus said it, so it's a done deal. So we must be ready, rapture ready. And I have three quick thoughts about being rapture ready. Thought number one, it's going to happen suddenly. Without warning? Yes and no. If you go to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, he gives a lot of signs about the second coming. Appearance of false Christ, wars and rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, earthquakes in various places. Look up earthquakes in the past few days. Hawaii, Colorado, China, Alaska, on and on. Famine. Northeastern Nigeria, Yemen, Somalia, 10 million facing a food crisis. And almost every day in my mailbox, along with bills, I get appeal after appeal from everything you can think of to feed people who are hungry. Oh, another sign, the gospel must be preached to all the world. That's what Matt and Laura Tipton are doing in a certain place right now. That's what Dr. Ricky Stevens and his crowd are doing down in Bolivia right now and thousands of others. So there are signs of the rapture, as the gospel song says, they're appearing everywhere. In Matthew's gospel, chapter 24, verse 36, Jesus said, no one knows the day or the hour when he will return, not the angels, not the son, but only the Father. And in 1 Thessalonians 5, Paul says the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. Oh, you need another sign that you need to be rapture ready? Revelation 16, 12. The sixth angel poured out a bowl on the great river Euphrates and its waters dried up to prepare for the coming of the kings from the east you see that on the news back in September? The Euphrates River dried up. Oh, God's celestial alarm clock is running at warp speed. Are you rapture ready? You can be. I'll share that in just a moment. Oh, another sign. I don't watch the news anymore. I did it for years and years, but it's too bad. I can't do anything about it but pray, so I don't watch it. But I was flipping across on my iPad last night in the state of Utah. Anybody in Utah watching? A school board there has declared that the Bible cannot be found in that school anywhere. They took them all out. No Bibles. 
anymore. Here's thought number two. Here's the order of the rapture. It's a necessity. Let me read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. I got it here somewhere. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, and the dead and Christ shall rise first. Ladies were singing in the song a few minutes ago. The Bible says it. I believe it. Oh, let me give you a personal word about the shout that's going to be. I believe, I was telling the kids, God knows our name. I believe he's going to call our name. That day that Jesus stood at Lazarus' tomb, he said, come forth. No, he didn't. What did he say? He said, Lazarus, come forth. If he just said, come forth, everybody would have gotten up. As I told the children, God's got your name, if you know him, engraved on the palm of your hand. And when he steps out, I believe, on the balcony of nothingness, he's going to call your name. Do you know it? That's Phil chapters 1 and 2. We get the order of the resurrection in 1 Thessalonians. The dead are going to rise. The dead arise first. I've been to a lot of cemeteries in the last three years. Two years ago, I preached 32 funerals. Most of those cemeteries are well kept. They're tranquil, peaceful, beautiful. But I tell folks at the gravesite, the hour and the moment is coming when the rapture comes, that calmness will be disturbed and the graves of the righteous dead will burst open and all the dead in Christ will rise. Oh, I know where Elizabeth and I want to be if we could know the moment that he's coming back with a shout. I'd like to be standing in my mother and father's tomb. She would too. And say, come on, Mama, Daddy. Let's go join the Lord in the sky. And then we who remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Got a loved one who's gone on as we say? We want to join them? We can, but you've got to be rapture ready. All three, I'm running through this in a hurry. Jesus is coming again. Paul makes that abundantly clear. Have we got my 1 Corinthians up there? Yeah, 1 Corinthians 15. Let's read just a few verses from that. Paul said, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not sleep, all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So with this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that's written, death swallowed up in vain. Oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Oh, it's going to happen. Paul says in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, be rapture ready. Got some thoughts. Live today as if it were the day. Be prepared be ready. Keep on doing the work that Jesus has left us to do. There's still people who do not know him as Lord and Savior. Encourage one another and don't, don't lose hope. Be prepared. Be prepared. Be rapture ready. Maybe it's my white hair and the age, but I have 
this innate sense that it's very close. As I see the signs of the times, 